Hi everyone, this is Rosella Zendeli here on YouTube and this is a video response to Sybil's 51st birthday challenge. I have watched a lot of the other videos and I just want to say that I really enjoy them. I love watching you all. I love getting to know people better and sometimes uh, getting to know new people a little bit as well and finding new people to subscribe to which is great so thank you Sybil for doing this I really appreciate it I decided to uh, participate even though I'm a little shy about showing my face which probably seems weird but it's true um, and the reason I think it probably sounds weird is because I hear people say I sound very confident when I do my videos which is I probably am because it's not my face. <laughs> anyway, um, so the challenge is to give five random things about ourselves, five random pieces of information or facts, and then one um, craft related piece of or information or one random fact. Okay, so here goes. Um, since I said something about this already, I'll continue. Um, although I I'm a performer and I can be on stage and act, especially act, but also sing on stage. Um, people think that I must have a lot of confidence and be outgoing, but I'm not. Um, I'm not outgoing at all. I'm actually very shy in person and um, I have what's known as social anxiety disorder. So I find it very difficult to be in groups of people. Um, to be around people I don't know and um, it makes me feel very stressed. Also being in big groups of people, no matter who they are, I don't like being in crowds at all. I find it very, very uncomfortable and um, I find it really hard to talk on the telephone. <laughs> yep, it's true. Um, I only have a handful of people um, that I am comfortable with talking on the phone and everybody else or every other situation I try to avoid. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of a contradiction there. I can be, I can perform, but I just kind of talk to people. <laughs> no, I can once I know you, but I do find it very difficult um, with people that I don't know or I don't know well. So there's that, that's one. Um, two is that I am from England originally and I was born and raised there, moved away from England when I was 14, going on 15, then moved to France for a year, and then to the United States. Uh, since I've been in the U.S., I've lived in Tucson, Wichita Falls, Texas, very briefly, Littleton and Aurora in Colorado, and uh, Vish not Vachon, Mercer Island here in Washington, and my current home, which is Bainbridge Island, Washington. Um, I was going to say that, um, my, I am very English in, uh, in my ancestry. We have a little bit of Scottish, a little bit of Irish, but it's by far and away mostly English. And, uh, I have a cousin who traced the Bannister name, which is my maiden name, all the way back to the Norman Conquest in 1066. So I think that's pretty cool. Um... So that's number two. Um, number three is that I have two daughters and their names are Kira and Tia. And Kira is 23, Tia is 21. Tia still lives at home. She has a lot of health issues. Um, in fact, tomorrow we are going to see one of her specialists. Uh, Kira lives not too far away, but over, uh, in the Seattle metro area and she lives with her boyfriend who is going to be her fiance soon and they are planning on getting married this year so that's really cool and I wanted to tell you a little bit about their names Kiera is spelled Q-U-I-E-R-A and um, when I was pregnant with her I wanted a name that meant uh, wanted because I was so excited about being pregnant and having a baby. And um, I came up with this idea that the Spanish word for to, the verb to want 
Um, one of the um, conjugations of the verb is kiera. And I thought, wow, that sounds like a name. That's really cool. Um, and then I remembered that it meant loved, too, or to love as well. So her name means loved and wanted, and I thought that was pretty awesome. And to this day, Kira still tells people that story about her name, and she still loves it. And it's still fairly unusual, though you do see it, especially with that, I mean, with that spelling. You see it with other spellings, but you do see it occasionally with that spelling. So that's Kira. And then Tia was going to be called Mariah. Um, uh, when I went into labor, she was going to be called Mariah. And when she was born, I looked, took one look at her and I said, no, nope, it's not going to work. And she was really little. Both my babies were tiny. And um, Tia just seemed to fit because it's a tiny little name. But I wanted her to have a longer version of the name so that if she felt like it wasn't serious enough or she wanted more when she was older, she could have that. So her full name is actually Christiana. So Christiana and Kira are my daughters. So um, I believe that was three. Yep, that was three. Um, number four, which one shall I do? I've done this video so many times and every time I tell different things. It's really weird. Sometimes they're the same, but often they're totally different. Um, number four is, um, I was a really weird kid. Okay, I'm a really weird adult too, but, um, I was, uh, very precocious and I learned a lot of things very early and I spoke very, very well. And it was really, really odd because I was also extremely short and I had um, no hair for a long time and then very, very fine baby hair. So I looked really young and I sounded really old. <laughs> so it was very odd. So um, one story my mom tells is that um, she and my grandmother and myself, we went on a bus in, uh, outside of London to go shopping or whatever and I was I believe two and um the back then they had conductors or conductresses <laughs> depending on if it's male or female and they would come up and they had this um little box kind of a thing and I still remember this um and you said how many tickets you wanted and where you were going to and um they would um like punch in something and then turn this handle and it would spit out your correct ticket okay so adults were one right and children were a half so this it was a woman i believe she came up and she you know she said where are you going and i piped up in my little tiny girl voice uh two and a half to railway bridge or whatever it was right and apparently she about fell over because i looked about a, a year maybe okay and here I was like talking in complete sentences no hair <laughs> really strange so there you go that's a funny story about me and then I'll tell you a funny story about me as I am now well not so much a story but it's it's who I am it's part of who I am and that is that I startle unbelievably easily my family thinks it is hysterically funny and actually I think it's pretty funny too and sometimes they do it deliberately to me they do things to make me startle and sometimes they just they don't mean to do it at all and my daughter Tia especially she says I'll say to her why did you make me jump and she'll say mom if I'd said anything you would have jumped if I didn't say anything you would have jumped so what am I supposed to do so when they startle me not only do I like jump right I scream I mean I really scream and it like goes on for like a long time I do not mean to do it I know it's stupid and total I totally completely cannot help it um but what's really weird too is that they can make me jump um when I know they're there so if we're in the house together and I know Chris is there but I don't realize he's in he's come into the same room as me I'll do it I'll scream or 
sometimes, and this is the absolute worst, we'll be in the same room, and I know that Tia or Chris is there, and they'll move so they're not in the same location as they were. And then I'll see them in the new location and I'll scream. It's so stupid, but it's also really, really funny. And they think it's, like I said, they think it's funny. I've told them they need to get video and we'll put it up on YouTube because I think we'd get a huge number of hits because really, I've never seen anybody as bad as me. So there you go. There's my solar thing about me as I am now. Okay, one craft thing. Um, I suck at crafts. There you go, that's my thing. I cannot make cards to save my life and I don't enjoy making them. And um, uh, it's just hit or miss with me. Oh, oh, wait, no, I know what I wanted to tell you guys because this is another really funny thing. Okay, the oddest scrapbook page I ever made was about a toilet. And I would like to know if anyone else out there has ever made a scrapbook page about a toilet. So I'll give you a very brief explanation on that. Um, it was a place I went on vacation. It's a little island off the east coast of Canada called um, Hornby Island. And they have to be very careful with their water supply and with trash and drainage and things like that because, you know, they have very limited resources. So they have a dump um, on the island. And the dump is also the, um, like, thrift store, basically, except you don't pay for anything. You just... Like, it's a swap thing, you know? Anything you don't want, you take there. You take to the dump and you put it in the store. And then if you want anything, you take it. It's a great system. But they also have a toilet there, a public toilet. And this public toilet is like this, I think it's round building. And it's like got all this kind of like painting and stuff on it. Because this place is very funky. The whole island is very funky. And inside the toilet... There's like decorations and stuff too, but there's one toilet for pee and one toilet for number two. And I just thought this was so funny and so weird, so I took pictures. And then I made a scrapbook page out of it. So there you go. I'm a strange one, aren't I? Okay, so that's my uh, video response. I've tried making this like six times and I keep trying to make it shorter and... Sometimes it doesn't work. This one's really long. Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks, Sybil. Happy birthday. I'll be joining you with at 51 later this year. And um, hi, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>